Hello everyone, Awesome Andrew of Awesome Albums here to talk about those who got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2023. We have a long list, so let's get started. First we're going to go over those who are inducted under the performer category, then we'll talk about those who got inducted for another category like musical excellence, early influencer, etc. First up, Kate Bush, English singer, songwriter, record producer, and dancer. In 1978, at 19 years old, she topped the UK singles chart for four weeks with her debut single, Wuthering Heights, becoming the first female artist to achieve a UK number one hit with a self-written song. Let's be honest, a lot of us are probably thinking that the reason why she got in this year is because of Running Up the Hill, which was in the newest season of Stranger Things, but I mean, it's a good song, and it's on a good album, but even before Stranger Things, that song was listed at number 60 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time in 2021. Sheryl Crow, American musician, singer, and songwriter. Her music incorporates elements of rock, pop, country, folk, and blues, and she sold over 50 million albums worldwide and won nine Grammy Awards out of 32 nominations. Very impressive. Missy Elliott, American rapper, singer, songwriter, and record producer. She started out in the R&B group Sista in the early mid-90s and later a member of Swing Mob. She launched her solo career in 1997 with her album Super Dupa Fly, which spawned the top 20 single Sock It To Me, the highest charting debut for a female rapper at the time. She has been referred to as the Queen of Rap by media outlets and has received four Grammy Awards and has sold over 40 million albums worldwide. George Michael, English singer, songwriter, and record producer. He is one of the best-selling musicians of all time with an estimated 100 to 125 million albums worldwide. He achieved 13 number one songs on the UK singles chart, five of them were when he was with Wham, as well as eight number one songs on the US Billboard Hot 100. He also received two Grammy Awards, three Brit Awards, 12 Billboard Music Awards, and four MTV Video Music Awards. Willie Nelson, American singer, songwriter, musician, political activist, and actor. He was one of the main figures in outlaw country, a subgenre of country music that developed in the late 1960s as a reaction to the conservative restrictions of the Nashville sound. The critical success of his album Shotgun Willie in 1973, as well as Redheaded Stranger in 1975 and Stardust 1978, made him one of the most recognized artists in country music. He was also a member of the country supergroup The Highwaymen, along with Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, and Chris Christopherson. Rage Against the Machine, American group known for mixing heavy metal and rap with punk rock and funk influences. Their debut album in 1992 achieved commercial success following their performance at the 1993 Lollapalooza Festival. In 2003, the album was ranked at number 368 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. They became one of the most popular and influential bands of the new metal genre which came to prominence during the late 90s and early 2000s. As of 2010, they sold over 16 million albums worldwide. The Spinners, American R&B group that formed in Michigan in 1954. They enjoyed a string of hits during the 1960s and 70s, and on June 30th, 1976, they received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. DJ Cool Herc, aka Clive Campbell, inducted on the Musical Influence Award, is a Jamaican DJ credited with contributing to the development of hip-hop in the Bronx, New York City in the 1970s through a back-to-school jam hosted by him and his sister Cindy on August 11th, 1973. He began to isolate the instrumental portions of the record which emphasized the drum beat, the break, and switched from one break to another. This break beat using funky drum solos formed the basis of hip-hop music. Campbell's announcements on top of the music helped lead to the rhythmically speaking that we now know as rap. Link Ray, inducted for the Musical Excellence Award, American guitarist, songwriter, and vocalist who became popular in the late 1950s. His 1958 instrumental single, Rumble, reached the top 20 in the U.S. and was one of the earliest in rock music to utilize distortion and tremolo. Rolling Stone ranked him at number 45 on their list of 100 greatest guitarists of all time. Shaka Khan, a.k.a. Yvette Marie Stevens, also inducted for Musical Excellence Award, an American singer whose career spanned more than five decades beginning in the early 1970s as the lead vocalist of the funk band Rufus. She is known as the Queen of Funk and was the first R&B artist to have a crossover hit featuring a rapper with I Feel For You in 1984. She has won 10 Grammy Awards and has sold an estimated 70 million albums worldwide. Al Cooper, a.k.a. Alan Cooperschmidt, also inducted for the Musical Excellence Award, American songwriter, record producer, and musician known for organizing Blood, Sweat, and Tears, although he didn't stay with them long enough to share their popularity. He was best known as a studio musician playing organ on Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone, French horn on the Rolling Stones' You Can't Always Get What You Want, and lead guitar on Rita Coolidge's The Ladies Not For Sale. 
He was also a successful manager and producer, recording Leonard Skinner's first three albums. Bernie Taupin, long overdue. Also getting in for the Musical Excellence Award, American songwriter, singer, and visual artist, he is best known for his long-term collaboration with Elton John, making them one of the most successful songwriting partnerships in history. Taupin wrote the lyrics for most of John's songs. Why they waited so long for him to get in, I don't know. If it were me, I would have put him in the Hall of Fame along with Elton John all the way back in 1994. Last one. Don Cornelius, getting in on the Ahmet Erdogan Award. American television show host and producer, widely known as the creator of the nationally syndicated dance and music show Soul Train, which he hosted from 1970 to 1993. He sold the show to Mad Vision Entertainment in 2008. Wow, lots of names this year. I understand there's a lot of odd choices for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I'm still excited to share this class with you all anyway. So let's give one more round of applause for the artists I mentioned. Congratulations, class of 2023, and I hope to see all of you in another video. Catch you then.